I wanted to take this chance to take part in the Book of Mormon Two Minute Challenge and share a little bit about how I came to know that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God. Growing up, I, I read it not very frequently, but I had read it a few times before my mission, and I had prayed about it, taken Moroni's promise. And I recall one specific experience I had where I prayed, and over the course of a few days, I kind of felt God telling me, you know, Ben, you know this is true. And so I talked to my mom. I'm like, Mom, is that normal? I kind of got this feeling like, you know it's true. And she's like, you know, I had a similar experience. And so I kind of ran with it. Um, when I'm a mission served, had wonderful experiences using the Book of Mormon and feeling the power of what it could do in changing someone's life. And then just a few years ago, I remember hearing a talk from somebody in church talking about how every time he read the Book of Mormon, he would take a new Moroni's promise to heart and he'd pray about it. And I thought, hmm, that's not something I do. And so I decided that I wanted to pray. So I I have a prayer journal where I write down my prayers on one column. And then the middle column, I write down what I'm going to do as my part. And then the last column, I will record any answers I've been given. And I, I recall I prayed for this a lot. I would, I would read and I'd ask God to help me know if it was if it was true. Even though I knew in my heart, I had a conviction of it. I just wanted just to feel that fulfillment through the Spirit as well. Um, through prayer directly because I had felt the Spirit countless times reading it. And I remember sitting in in my living room. We were watching conference. I was holding my little daughter who's now two. It was the October 2011 conference. And D. Tad Callister, um, I think that's his name. He, or Tad Callister, I, one, of, one of the 70, he spoke and he got up. He talked about his grandfather who who read the Book of Mormon and said, this is either a book of the devil or of God, and I'm going to find out. And then after relating the story of his grandfather, he again said this. He said, the Book of Mormon is either of God or of the devil. Something to that effect. And I recall I was, I was holding my daughter, and as he said that, I kind of, I just felt the Spirit tell me, it's like, Ben, you know this book is not, of the devil, um, you know, you know it's not, and it was just a confirmation to me. There are so many wonderful, beautiful things about the Book of Mormon, and that's why I think it's so important to to have people read and share with the world just those little verses that help them and that are testifying of Jesus Christ. Um, and the other thing I thought of is, you know what? Could I deny that? Nephi, if I denied the Book of Mormon, what am I really denying? I'm denying that Nephi or Lehi ever existed. You know, I'm denying that King Benjamin ever got on a tower and preached to his people and was a wonderful king who, who fought for his people's freedom with his own sword. Um, I'm denying that Abinadi was burned at the stake and, and bore his testimony to, to King Noah and his people. I would be denying that Mormon spent most of his life protecting and abridging this record. I'd be denying that Moroni buried this record and wandered his whole life um, being hunted after because he believed in Jesus. And I'd be denying that Christ appeared to these, these Nephi people after his, his resurrection. And those, those just aren't things that I can't deny. And just every now and then, I think every person just wants to feel that again, to feel the Spirit confirm to you that this book is of God. And so I would second the recommendation that was given by that one good brother to, to always take that promise. And as you read, to seek that confirmation through prayer, because you'll feel it as you read as well. You'll feel that conviction, and you'll see the good that the book has. But just seek that through prayer as well.